But you've got, to have, you've got to change your awareness of yourself, as Maslow said. And one of the ways that you change your aware, awareness of yourself is to understand a very, simple, a very simple premise. Think of an apple pie. Here's an apple pie. And this apple pie, you take this apple pie and you take a slice of this apple pie and you put it over here. And then you walk over to the slice and you say to the apple pie, the slice of apple pie, what are you like? What are you like? And the little slice of apple pie says, I must be like what I came from. You wouldn't expect it to be pineapple. You wouldn't expect it to be cherry. You would expect it to be like what it came from, right? So why is it that we understand this, and yet we don't understand that we too must be like what we came from? We must be, we are, we are pieces of God. We came from a divine source. We have, to, we have to trust in our divinity. We have to understand that we are not this package of bones and skin encapsulating, you know, these internal organs, that that's not who we are. That's what we call the false self. It's an illusion. That who we really are is what we came from. And what we came from is eternal, it's infinite, it's kind, it's unlimited, it is, excludes no one. So that if we understand that we are really here as spiritual beings, just having a human experience, not the other way around. We're not human beings having a spiritual experience, it's the other way around. We, our essence is our greatness what we came from. We must be like what we came from. I've just taken up this new practice. It's called yoga. Now, I'm 65 years old, and I've decided that there are certain things that I was told that I couldn't do at earlier stages of my life that I've decided I'm taking on. I don't care what my age is or what anybody else is told. What Mrs. McConnell told me in the sixth grade at Marquette Elementary School in Detroit that um, you don't have to come to art class. Um, it's really not for you. <laughs> you. You can go dribble basketballs maybe, but uh, you don't want to come to art. This is because she saw some of my uh, stick drawings that uh, I was pretty proud of. And then there was Mr. Tubbs at Denby High School in Detroit who when I turned in my first drawing in uh, <coughs> drafting class. I didn't even know what drafting was. I just signed, they threw, it, they threw me in there because the, the school was so overcrowded. It was my elective. And I turned in my first drawing and he asked me the question, do you have a little sister? <laughs> <laughs> like in the third grade because she perhaps is the one that did this way. That was my uh, whole view of my artistic ability. I'm out there painting now. I'm doing painting and I'm also doing yoga, all right? And I've learned some things about myself in, in the process of doing this. It was like a change in attitude, a shift, a belief system that I no longer was hanging on to. And that's what we have to do. There's no, it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your beliefs have been. It doesn't matter what other people have tried to convince you of in the past. When you move into spirit and have a knowing that I have the capacity to be able to do this, you leave behind the false self. And the false self is really nothing more than this ego. Look, you came from a divine place, a divine place that is unlimited, that says you can be anything you put your attention on. And then you bought into a whole series of beliefs that were handed to you by very well-meaning people attempting to convince you that you had limitations, that you couldn't do this, that this wasn't possible. And I'd like to suggest to you that you took on something called an ego. E-G-O, an ego. You came in from divinity, you came in from a place of unlimited, you show up and you edged God out. E-G-O. And when you edge God out, 
It doesn't mean that you're sacrilegious. It doesn't mean that you're not a, uh, a moral person. It means that you take on a belief system that says, who I am is no longer this infinite divine being who can step outside and observe this body and believe that he can make it do whatever I put my attention on and use it to have the same powers that is spoken about in, in the New Testament. Even the least among you can do all that I have done and even greater things it's in within each and every one of us except that we bought into an idea that who we are is what we have who we are is what we do who we are is what other people think I am who I am is separate from everybody else who I am is separate from what I would like to attract into my life and who I am is separate from my source and we believe in this separation and we believe in this identity that who I am is what I have so we start accumulating we accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. The problem is that when you stop accumulating, and if who you are is what you accumulate, then you have no value as soon as your things start to disappear, as soon as they wear out, as soon as somebody else takes them, as soon as the government taxes them, as soon as any number of things. Who I am is what I do. If you no longer can do, then you aren't. You no longer exist. Who I am is my reputation. And we raise our children often to believe that what's most important is what other people think of you. Fit in. Do what, do what you've been told to do. Do what the crowd does. Follow the herd. And you know what happens is what you step in when you follow the herd. <laughs> so we take on all of these sort of false ideas and we have a tendency to believe them. And, and inspiration is moving back into spirit. And it's moving back into spirit in such a way that you no longer accept yourself as anything other than divine.